I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. Welcome to The Black Excellence and Abundance Channel. William Edward Burghardt Du Bois, better known as W.E.B. Du Bois, was born on February 23rd. 1868 in Great Barrington, Massachusetts. While growing up in a mostly white American town, Du Bois freely attended school with white people and was supported in his academic studies by his family. In 1885, he moved to Nashville, Tennessee to attend Fisk University. It was there that he first encountered Jim Crow laws. For the first time, he began analyzing the deep troubles of American racism. After earning his bachelor's degree at Fisk, Du Bois entered Harvard University. He, like so many others of his time, paid his way with money from summer jobs, scholarships, and loans from friends. W.E.B. Du Bois would become the first African American to earn a Ph.D. from Harvard University in 1895. He wrote extensively and was the best known spokesperson for African American rights during the first half of the 20th century. He was a scholar and activist. After completing his master's degree, he was selected for a study abroad program at the University of Berlin. While a pupil in Germany, he studied with some of the most prominent social scientists of his day and was exposed to political perspectives that he touted for the remainder of his life. He went on to enroll as a doctoral student at Frederick Wilhelms University, now Humboldt University. He would be awarded an honorary doctoral degree from Humboldt decades later in 1958. W.E.B. and his wife Nina married in 1896. They had two children, their firstborn, a son, and their daughter, Yolanda. Unfortunately, their son became sick and doctors in the South refused to treat a black couple's child and the son died. Du Bois published his landmark study, The First Case Study of an African-American Community, The Philadelphia Negro, a social study in 1899, marking the beginning of his expansive writing career. In this study, he coined the phrase the talented tenth, a term that described the likelihood of one in ten black men becoming leaders of their race. While working as a professor at Atlanta University, Du Bois rose to national prominence when he publicly opposed Booker T. Washington's Atlanta Compromise, an agreement that asserted that the vocational education for black people was more valuable to them than social advantages like higher education or political office. Du Bois criticized Washington for not demanding full equality for African Americans as granted by the 14th Amendment. Du Bois fought what he believed was an inferior strategy, subsequently becoming a spokesperson for full and equal rights in every realm of a person's life. Although these two men may have had a difference of opinion, the end goal was the same. Unfortunately, there's always a debate in our community who should we follow, Martin or Malcolm? Michael or Prince? Whitney or Mariah, Brandy or Monica. I personally feel that there's no reason to have dissension within us. 
The end goal is to get to the finish line. It's like taking different routes to go to the same destination. The goal is to get to the destination, not necessarily the route. So Malcolm or Martin, Brandy or Monica, Michael or Prince, W.E.B. or Booker T. The goal is to get to the finish line. In 1903, Du Bois published a seminal work, The Souls of Black Folk, a collection of 14 essays. In the years following, he adamantly opposed the idea of biological white superiority and vocally supported women's rights. He was ahead of his time when it came to those issues. In 1909, Du Bois co-founded the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, the NAACP, and he served as editor of its monthly magazine, The Crisis. Du Bois was a very outspoken proponent of Pan-Africanism. He helped organize several Pan-African Congresses to free African colonies from European powers. Pan-Africanism Result of these events, realization that it would benefit blacks to work together in an effort to solve problems such as slavery, colonization, and racism. Pan-African conferences took place in 1900, 1919, 1921, 1923, 1927, and 1949, included some of the most influential black people from our history, like W.E.B. Du Bois, Marcus Garvey, Sylvester Williams, and Kwame Nkrumah. After the passing of his first wife in 1951, Du Bois married his second wife, Shirley Graham. Du Bois once said, quote, I shall not go to the polls. I believe that democracy has so far disappeared in the United States that no two evils exist. There is but one evil party with two names, and it will be elected despite all I can do or say, unquote. This great man of many talents died at the age of 95 in 1963, one day before the historic March on Washington, where Dr. King gave the I Have a Dream speech. He died and is buried in Ghana. He's also famous for having said, either America will destroy ignorance or ignorance will destroy the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, rather you agree with W.E.B. Du Bois, Booker T. Washington, Malcolm or Martin, the end goal is for us to move forward as a people. And I have to say, none of them are perfect as I am not perfect. There is no perfect strategy. The important thing is that we do have a strategy. And W.E.B. Du Bois had a strategy. The Black Excellence and Abundance Channel, where black history is every day. Thanks for watching. We ask that you please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe as it is greatly appreciated. And never forget that thou art rich.